that scenery is so doggone beautiful, we just had to stop for a few days and soak it up. By this time, I knew I was serious about Connie. She was friendly enough, but most of the time, she kept busy with her painting. Tell me something. Sure. What's the matter with me? I don't lose anything, your son. You got your heart set on getting over the other side of the ocean and covering the big stories, and of course you're thinking about Connie. I've been thinking a lot about Connie. What kind of a guy is this Ted Newell? Oh, Ted's all right. Kind of opinionated about some things, but he's solid. I see. Does Connie... Oh. I'm not taking any sides in this thing. Connie and I kept right on talking about the scenery. The falls on the Yellowstone River. And they are pretty spectacular. Lots of color and action out there. Right on schedule, old faithful bluer top. I got to looking at the people, and especially at their cars. Dad said, There's many as 70 million of us jump in our cars in the summer and, and just go places. took a big swing through Montana. They say out here, youngsters learn to walk almost as soon as they can ride. This is real vacation country. into the lowlands of Montana in time for the wheat harvest. Another thing I'd always wanted to see was the Mount Rushmore Memorial in South Dakota. There they are. Washington, Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Abe Lincoln. So big they had to sculpt them out with dynamite. Old Mother Nature did some sculpting of her own in South Dakota's Badlands. But you know, they have a kind of eerie beauty all their own. Talk about contrasts. In North Dakota, we ran into the wheat harvests again. From there, we drove over to Itasca Park in Minnesota, where the trees grow green and tall. And every breeze makes its own kind of poetry in the treetops. where the Mississippi begins. There, it's so narrow you can walk across. Then there's the great Mesabi Range, where so much of our iron ore has come from. It's like a giant's playground. Way down there, the big equipment, the trucks, and the men look like so many toys for children. Duluth on Lake Superior is one of the leading freight ports of the world. Most of us don't realize how much traffic they handle.
As you drive down from Minnesota into Wisconsin, you're in another perfect vacation land. A land of trees and lakes. It was beside one of those Wisconsin lakes that I finally made up my mind to speak to Connie. Hi, Dale. I was just fixing my hair. Isn't that view something? Yes, it is. But I'd rather look at you. You're beautiful, Connie. You know, all the way from Michigan, I've been wondering just what I was doing. Dale, you've been wonderful. Both Dad and I appreciate it. Connie. How'd you like to spend a honeymoon in Paris? I... Dale... Paris in the spring is pretty wonderful. Will you marry me, Connie? Dale, marriage is a lot more than Paris in the spring. All right, then. Summer, fall, winter. That's just it. You and I are a thousand miles apart. Oh, don't say no, Connie. Won't you at least think about it? Anyway, she didn't say no. Then we drove down along the Wolf River, headed for the Wisconsin Dells. Years ago, lumbermen used to float their logs downstream through here on the way to the sawmills. We saw the sights of the Dells. Stand Rock. The weird rock formations. Wisconsin isn't all lakes and gorges and forests. They have some of the richest dairy land in the country. Fine, big herds. I was enjoying it so much, I hated to see the trip end. I tried to stretch it out as long as I could. For instance, we drove back west a ways to take in the Iowa State Fair. You know, I'd never been to a fair like that before, and I'd missed something. Dad took off to the trotting races. Connie and I, well, we just had fun. For a day, I forgot all about Paris and my job there. And I hope Connie was forgetting about her Ted Newell. Having fun is part of a state fair, but there's another side. All over the country, people get together at fairs like this to compare livestock and to exchange new ideas about farming. Well, it was quite a vacation. But like all good things, it finally came to an end. Connie and her father lived in a pleasant, small town with a town square and a bandstand. They had a comfortable white house on a shaded street. And it was on their front porch that I finally met Ted Newell. So you're Dale Bennett. I've had so many letters from Constance about you, I feel as if I knew you. Mighty nice of you to pull them around. It was nice for And I wanted Constance to try out this notion of hers. You know, painting things, trying to sell them. A lot of fun, but no way to live. Well, now, Frankly, I... I hope she has it out of her system. I want her to keep on painting, of course, you know, as a hobby. But we have other plans, which seem to me to be, well, just a little bit more important. Well, I've got to run. See you later. You know... No, don't say it. The paintings haven't sold too well. But some people like them. And a friend of Ted's has promised me an art gallery show. Hey, wait a minute. I've got a better idea. Will you let me pick out a few of them and take them with me? Why, yes. But why? I'd like to try something. I'll let you know what happens. Dale, thanks for everything. And good luck in Paris. I wish you could be around here for a while. So do I. But... I can't explain what I'm trying to say very well, but... 
If you could be here next Saturday afternoon, for instance, for the band concert. Well, that's the story. I think her paintings are too good to be looked at by a few people. I think she has something to say about places and people that millions ought to see and think about. It's something that millions of people feel right here, even though they may not say much about it. It's the same thing that Ernie Pyle saw when he traveled around. The grassroots, the real heart and hope of America. Maybe of the whole world. Let me show you. Go ahead. Why, look. You can see it right in the face of this boy with his prize-winning calf. It's as big as our whole country. But it's alive in this scene of a sheep herder, off all by himself, alone. But a part, and a mighty important part, of the way we work together. It's right there in the face of this roustabout in a new oil field. It's in the faces of all these people. But it starts right close to the earth. Look at this small town. Then add our farms, our cities, and our industry. And you discover the real secret of America right here in the Middle West. Don't you see what I mean? Think about printing one of these pictures every Sunday. Let millions of newspaper readers see them and maybe understand this country a little better. I like them. Better yet, I like what you say about them. You give me an article in each painting, Dale, the way you're talking now, and it's a deal. Then we can talk about when you go back to Paris. Back to Paris. Take this new point of view back with you. Give me this kind of story about the people over there, the places over there, warm human stuff. Give me the same thing from Europe. But it isn't the same. People are people around the world. Yes, but what I'm talking about, what I've seen in the faces of these people, what's in their lives, their hearts, their hopes, their opportunities, that's something alive right here in the Middle West. Why, I just suddenly realized that this is the only place in this world today where I can find the things I want to talk about. This is a wonderful place for a vacation, sure. But more than that, this is where I want to put my roots down, to work and live. <laughs> I've just talked myself out of the Paris job, haven't I? What's the matter with you? You've been fighting to get back to the Paris office. OK, the job's yours. Take it. No, sir. I got a better idea. I've got a date. A date? Yeah. A date with a bandstand. Mm -hmm.